Welcome back, Officers of the Republic. It's your Coruscant Underworld Police Chief, AP Gaines. We're going to talk about what your first galactic legend should be, and we're going to talk about when you should arrive at the point of farming a galactic legend. Everyone wants galactic legends because they're the big bad guys. They're super, super cool, and everyone likes them. Um, obviously, I think with it, it goes without saying that you should never rush a galactic legend. Um, everyone knows that at this point, you know, I've beaten many a dead horse. Uh, PETA has an active uh, kill on sight order for me for the amount of times I've beaten this dead horse. Get your core eight teams so that you're at least winning all of your grand arenas before you go for a galactic legend. The worst thing you can do is go too tall as opposed to wide and get exposed by better players with better accounts, even though you have your galactic legend. So we're assuming that you have your core eight, your CLS, Empire, Vader, Mara, your Padme, your bounty hunters, your both your Revens, your General Grievous, and your Gas, right? We're assuming you have your core eight, the basic, 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 basic fundamentals of your account are put together, right? So we're at the point now where we need to farm a Galactic Legend. It's important. Galactic Legends, as much as AP Games will tell you that Galactic Legends are not the meta because they're not and you shouldn't rush them because you shouldn't, they're still important to have because of, you know, you need to be able to punch up a little bit. Certain Galactic Legends are harder to off meta counter. C, not so much. SLKR, kind of, but not really. Uh, Kenobi is very hard to off meta. JML is hard to off meta. Ray isn't. Uh, who am I missing? There's got to be one more. Oh, Lord Vader. Lord Vader is okay to off meta but a lot of you guys who are you know gonna not have a collector you're not gonna have a fully relic seven relic eight uh fennec shand and stuff like that but there are six galactic legends in the game as you guys all know they each have their each each has an individual pro and con for being the first galactic legend i'm gonna come outright and say that lord vader and ray should probably not be your first galactic legends i think those of you guys who have played the game for long enough will just take this as a basic fundamental truth um, I know a lot of people like to, to go Lord Vader early his requirements actually aren't that bad um, anymore it's just his requirements are the steepest of all of them that means it's gonna take the longest and I just don't think that the time it's gonna take you to get him is worth it is he an okay second or third galactic legend absolutely 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 he is totally fine as a second or a third galactic legend I have no problem with that Ray Ray is just the worst Galactic Legend, and you should stay away from her in general. She's fine to have if you have at least two or three Galactic Legends already, but she definitely shouldn't be your first one. All right, that leaves us with four. Kenobi, SLKR, C, and JML. Now, when it comes to Russian Galactic Legends, unfortunately, a lot of people start with a C or an SLKR. I would say these are the two worst Galactic Legends to rush simply because they don't offer you uh, all that much in terms of GAC win percentage increase. Um, J JMK you can't rush and JML is hard to rush, you know, leaving you to six GLs that shouldn't be rushed. But let's start with Kenobi, right? Obviously, Kenobi is the best. Obviously, if you can have Kenobi, he is the best by far. It, there is no close second. Kenobi is by far the best. That being said, he is very hard to get. He requires a seven-star Watt Tambor. He requires Relic 8 mats. He requires a bunch of Relics. He is hard to get. So if you have your core eight teams... And you're in a really good guild, your guild is getting R8s in Territory Wars, or maybe you're even getting R8s in the Crankor, and you got your, your Watt Tambors at least 5 stars or 4 stars, and you're doing alright. Kenobi is the optimum, ideal, perfect world scenario for Galactic Legend, right? If you're following the AP Gains Approved Farming Guide, you're in a good guild, this is the one you want to go for because he's the best and we just, you know, he's the best, you want him. That being said, a lot of people won't fall into the category, so if that's not you, it's no problem. You can farm one of the other three. Let's say SLKR. SLKR is going to be our first Galactic Legend, assuming that we have our core teams and we have bad sheet, uh, bad ships, bad fleets. But I tried to say ships and fleets, and I said, like, sheets. I'm just going to call them sheets now. You have bad sheets. It's a cold winter's night. You're shivering, and you need some more sheets. This is where SLKR comes in. He obviously, his characters are very doggy doo-doo, which makes him one of the worst Galactic Legends to rush next to C. But he does now come with a good fleet and a good Omicron, which kind of saves a lot of the bad parts about him just a little bit. Definitely not enough to rush. But as a first Galactic Legend, assuming you have your core eight, he does add some good value to the team, especially, 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 especially if your fleets are terrible. Now, I know a lot of people don't like farming fleets, and that's that's fine right like fleets are annoying in the mid game they are by far the most important part of the game 
without a doubt. So ideally, you should already have them. Therefore, you don't necessarily need to kind of be in that worst case scenario where SLKR is going to be your first Galactic Legend. But everyone plays the game differently. Everyone finds these videos at a different point. Everyone does their own thing, and that's totally fine. I'm going to give options for everyone so that no one is left out, right? If your ships are really bad, you got your core teams, SLKR is a totally fine first Galactic Legend. He's a great character. His ships are great. The Omicron is really good. You're not going to go wrong with him as your first Galactic Legend if you really need the ships. Sith Eternal Emperor, I'd probably stick kind of at the bottom down with Lord Vader and Rey. Um, he's okay. On, he's pretty good on offense. He can beat almost anything on offense. On defense, he leaves a little bit to be desired. If you have a good Wampa or a good General Grievous team, he's kind of a liability on defense, Imperial Troopers and stuff like that. Um, that being said, I mean, he's, he's fine to put on defense. A lot of the times, um, stuff that I warn you against is to warn you against the good players, right? Cause let's go back to the, to the, like the, the C rush or the SLK rush. You're going to win a lot of your grand arenas because I would say 70 to 75% of the players who play this game are not like you guys. They're not watching videos. They're not, you know, they're not good players. Like, let's just be honest. A lot of players who play Grand Arena are very, very, very bad at the game. And that's totally fine. Everyone plays this game to different levels of being casual or being super try-hard, of not spending money, of spending money, of knowing what they're doing, of not knowing what they're doing, of playing for six years, of playing for six months. You know what I mean? So we're not really worried about the 70 to 75% of wins that you win just by having brain cells, right? Um, what we're talking about is the 20 to 25% or the, the 30 to 25% of GAC battles where you go against great players. Now, great players will expose a Sith Eternal Emperor. So if you're okay with winning 75% of your GACs and losing the other 25%, you know, C is, he's totally fine. If you support him with a good core, you can kind of make up for all of the major pitfalls of Sith Eternal Emperor. So if you want him to be as your first GL because he's the fastest GL to farm and then maybe he kind of, kind of leads into Executor a little bit faster, I will not give any pushback. That's probably going to be where a lot of people fall. They're like, I can get him really quickly. Not really quickly. I can get him in 8 to 12 months. Um, well, that's probably going to be more like, I'd say you can get him around 7 to 8 months, right? After you have your full core. You'll probably be in a pretty good spot to get him. Um, and then he slightly increases the executor farm just a little bit. If that's your justification, I have no problem. I'm not going to give any pushback. JML is the last one. I'm farming jail. I think JML is the perfect second Galactic Legend. Um, obviously, I went Kenobi first, but um, like, let's say you went C or SLKR first. Your second Galactic Legend should be Kenobi. If you went Kenobi, your second Galactic Legend should probably be JML. I think JML is he's either the second or the third best Galactic Legend, depending on what you feel about uh, Lord Vader. I think Lord Vader is better personally, but that's very mall dependent. JML is. Not entirely Jedi, Jedi Knight Luke dependent. I'm a big proponent of splitting up teams. That being said, I don't know if I'll put my JML and my Jedi Knight Luke together when I eventually have them. But he doesn't really offer you much in terms of ships. He gives you a Mon Mothma team that's kind of useless now, unfortunately. Um, he does give you Jedi Knight Luke, though. Jedi Knight Luke is basically like gas. He's a great character. Those are the characters that you want. You want the Jedi Knight Luke gas kind of characters. Um, he's really hard to off meta. And he can beat anything on offense, but you're likely only going to place him on defense. I would probably say... I would probably say he's not a great first Galactic Legend, right? Because you're either going to fall in one of two camps. You're going to fall in the camp where you can go for uh, Kenobi, and you're in the optimal camp, and he's obviously the best. Or you're going to fall in the camp where you can't go for Kenobi, and if you can't go for Kenobi, you're likely don't have great ships and likely SLKR is a better first galactic legend. Now, if you have unbelievably amazing ships and you'd rather go for JML because he gives you a gas Jedi Knight Luke type of character that will massively increase your offensive and defensive versatility. I'm also not going to give any pushback on that, but really what it comes down to is what does your roster look like? I can't tell you in one video for the, either two or 10,000 people who will watch this video. Exactly. I, I can't like, have I seen over 10 or 11,000 rosters in all of my roster reviewing days? We roster review every day, 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Come join the live stream and I don't know, you can increase the size of your penis. 
Yes, obviously we do that, and I've seen the most rosters of any human being on God's green earth. That being said, I don't know what your rosters look like just by, you know, talking into this camera, because believe it or not, this is just a $10 camera mounted to my crappy monitor next to my laptop. I can't actually see your roster. So it's going to depend on what you guys have. So you guys are going to have to take the information as it is and make your own decisions, or you can obviously show up to the stream and I'll tell you to your face. That being said, I love you. Subscribe to help boost my ego. We're trying to get 20,000 subscribers by the end of Jumbo PP June, and I will see you later.